Infinity's with you. Today I'll show you a creature that was discovered inside of Egyptian pyramids and gave quite a turn to scientists. To warm up a little bit and get in the right mindset, let's start with unusual findings. You can find all kinds of ancient utensils in Egypt, some mysterious decorations, and even buried cities. However, it's not so interesting. It's much more curious to find some unusual mummy that can be an alien mummy. At the end of last year, the UFOologist Marcel Steffen managed to do so and maintained that he had discovered several mummies with strange shape of skull. According to his words, they can obviously belong to representatives of extraterrestrial civilizations, and ancient Egyptians were likely to contact them. Marcel narrated that mummies had humanoid facial features and resembled typical aliens. However, he didn't share photos, either he was still studying the issue to post them on the internet or just bluffed because of finding some unusual remnants. But Marcel seems to prepare some sensation. It's what the finding says that's already leaked out onto the web. This skull of a strange shape discovered in Egypt several years ago. It was prolonged, which is typical for local people, and for aliens, this shape is considered standard. Possibly a German UFOologist came across almost the same remnants. Truth be told, in case of this skull, there were skeptics who maintained that all this was nonsense and that those were ancient Egyptians that practiced artificial skull elongation. This was made to differ from others. It's not a bad argument. This was really the case. At the same time, there are other strange findings you cannot overturn anymore. For example, this unusual mummy. It was found in one of the Giza pyramids. In general, the scientists discovered four such mummies. However, this was only one of them that was posted online. Absent belly button, noticeable facial differences, different cranial structure. Can we say that we can see a mummy of a person in front of us? It's an extraterrestrial creature. Along with this, it's confirmed not only visually. Scientists made a DNA analysis and found out that the mummies were not human. They also didn't look like animals. The only version left is about aliens. There's a theory that pyramids were built exactly by aliens, and all these strange mummies found in the pyramid strengthen the belief that the version is true. However, many other mysterious findings were discovered in the pyramid. For example, several years ago, a robot explored the farthest room in the Cheops pyramid. He came across a rosette-type wall covering the secret room. The scientists counted that something or even someone could be inside, and they were right. The robotic camera captured this. For obvious reasons, the image quality was bad, but scientists consider that the robot could have caught alien remnants. There's a theory that it could have been buried alive there when he completed the interior work of the pyramid. What's interesting, detailed information about the finding was classified by the local government. This is the explanation why those were only such bad images that were leaked out to the web. Theoreticians are sure there was something else in the room. It's even possible that it was something alive. This way, in the course of one of the expeditions, this shot was made. They say that it was no member of the expedition but an alien who somehow survives in the pyramid. It's the body shape that can be indicative of an alien origin. It's more typical for aliens than Earthers. There's another finding of those buried in the Cheops Pyramid. It was not possible to take it out, but the scan showed remnants of some creatures. Someone considers that this is another alien, whereas scientists believe that it's a human. At the same time, not an ordinary one. There's a version that it's the skeleton of a dwarf. In ancient Egypt, the dwarfs were worshipped. It's proposed that after a pharaoh died, dwarfs held a definite right aimed to protect him against evil spirits. Concerning this dwarf, he may have been buried in the pyramid as a tribute after his death to show his high status. Though this version sounds logical, it's quite possible that he could have been an alien. They are too intimately related to Egypt and pyramids. Speaking of pyramids, everybody knows that there are three of them in Giza, at least those most legendary. These are the Pyramid of Menkare, the Pyramid of Shefren, and the Pyramid of Cheops. Next to them, we can see the so-called Fellow Pyramids of Menkare. But what if I tell you that there are four pyramids in reality? There's information, according to which, there was at least one pyramid more. This is what the famous Danish explorer and captain Frederick Norden said. In 1730, he traveled to Sudan through the whole of Egypt. In the course of the trip, Norden made notes and drawings concerning Egyptian architecture. Several drawings have remained where we can see that there were four pyramids aligned. What's interesting, 
There's no doubt that these are the same pyramids. Frederick wrote about them as those located in the southeast and east of Giza. According to the captain's words, a fourth pyramid differed from the others. It was black, produced from black stone, firm as granite. The pyramid was the tallest of all, more than 150 meters. For comparison, the Great Pyramid of Cheops, the biggest of those preserved, is 138 meters tall. Norden wrote that there were no sepulchers or other things inside the Black Pyramid, but on its top you could see a colossal cube-shaped yellow stone that possibly served as a pedestal. Egyptologists consider this a thin story, and they're sure that no fourth pyramid has ever existed. You can ask a question, why did Norden draw the pyramid and paint it in detail for? It doesn't make sense. Even three pyramids could shock Europeans. Moreover, the captain was famous for his sincerity and never caught lying or trying to mystify the situation. It comes out that he was right, but then where the fourth pyramid disappeared to and why no trace of it was left? This is still a mystery. What are pyramids for? Many will say, without hesitation, they're tombs for pharaohs. Yes, most pyramids were built for this purpose, but the Great Pyramids of Giza, for example, are not tombs. Pharaohs were not buried there. In the best case, these pyramids were temporary tombs, after which pharaohs were reburied in other places. Another theory says that the pyramids are something of a status symbol. The pharaohs were considered literal gods, and like gods, they had to create something great. This is what the pyramids became. There are different crazy theories about the purpose of the pyramids, and I'll tell you more about them. But for now, I'll share with you a legend that's worth hearing. According to it, the pyramids were granaries. That's what Passage 41 in the Pentateuch's Book of Genesis tells us. In a nutshell, Pharaoh had a dream that scared the hell out of him. He asked Joseph, the son of the biblical forefather, to interpret the dream. He said that Egypt would have first faced a bountiful seven-year harvest and then a severe seven-year famine. Pharaoh asked for help, and Joseph began to roll around Egypt for seven years, gathering the harvest to spare. Legend has it that he stockpiled the supplies, accumulated enough, and thus saved Egypt from famine. Theorists decided to rework this legend to fit a version of the purpose of the pyramids and got the following simple scenario. The Egyptians built the pyramids as huge granaries, not to make them tombs or grandiose construction of pharaohs. This explains the fact that no remnants of pharaohs have been found in the pyramids. True, it's not clear why it was necessary to build all these difficult corridors where you can get easily lost. And even for huge granaries, the pyramids were too big and elaborate. There's one more interesting theory, according to which pyramids were not intended for something physical at all, neither for storage of grain nor as tombs. According to this theory, pyramids are one big rebus. After solving it, you'll understand when the world will come to the end. The author of this theory is considered an astronomer, Charles Piazzi Smith. In the 1860s, he traveled to Egypt and explored the pyramids. Upon returning to the UK, he wrote a book, the essence of which is briefly as follows. We are about to be dead in the water. Smith took an exotic approach to the creation of the pyramids and in particular the Pyramid of Cheops. According to him, this pyramid was not built by Egyptians, but by deities as evidenced by various divine references in the structure you must redeem to understand the meaning. Smith saw some kind of signs in everything, literally every stone in the pyramid, and eventually put the puzzle together. He wrote that if you measure the passage in the pyramid in inches, you can get a complete chronology of the Earth's future history. For example, the pyramid's great gallery with a sloped passageway depicts the birth of Jesus Christ, and 33 inches later, his crucifixion. Given that Jesus lived to be 33 years old, it turns out that one inch is one year. The astronomer goes on to write that the gallery ends at a point between 1881 and 1911 inches. Smith believed that this represented the years of the Great Tribulation before the Second Coming of Christ and consequently Judgment Day and the end of the world. Christians were a little shocked and began to panic that the world would have ended in 1881, but as we know, it didn't happen. In general, Smith's theory is questionable. At least the pyramids were built long before Jesus. The astronomer was hardly hooted at even during his lifetime. Another Egyptologist who was on good terms with him told Smith that he went cuckoo and criticized his theory. But let's still imagine that Smith somehow miraculously broke through the version with the real purpose of the pyramids and simply miscalculated. Perhaps he was mistaken by a couple tenths of an inch and the second coming will happen in a few decades. 
We'll see how it goes. Still, I find Charles Smith's version too drawn out and implausible. Even the absolutely insane version seems more truthful against its background. It's about the Egyptian pyramids being huge ancient power plants. At least theorists consider such a pyramid of Cheops. This can be evidenced by the composition of the pyramid itself. The outer stone blocks are made of sandstone, containing a lot of quartz. The king's chamber, one of the main rooms of the pyramid, also contains quartz. When compressed, quartz generates piezoelectricity. These are electrical charges that appear on the faces of quartz when a force is applied to the material. The theory of electric pyramids says that the mass of the pyramid of Cheops evenly applies pressure on itself. This is how a constant electric current is created. Originally, when the pyramid was first built, it was lined with slabs of pure limestone, which did not allow current to pass through. It turns out that it was as if the pyramid had been covered with an insulating casing, and all the electricity was generated within it. The granite corridors and shafts of the pyramid helped to retain and redirect the energy charge. In other words, they represented something like cables. But what was the electricity directed to? Here, version differ. Someone says that the charge rose from the ground and concentrated on the top of the pyramid from where it was released outside. The initial shape of the pyramid speaks for itself. In the photos modeled by scientists, the top differs from the rest of the pyramid. Therefore, it's where the charge could have come from. Another version says that the electricity, on the contrary, went somewhere into the ground, was redirected to other systems and spread around Egypt. Theorists are more inclined to the first version. In their opinion, the pyramid is located on the geological break where special energy is concentrated, could have been scooped up by the pyramid, transformed into electricity, and released through the top. There's an opinion that energy could be sent to space in the form of signals for communication with aliens. As some fans of conspiracy believe, those were who built the pyramids. But there's another crazy theory explaining the construction of the pyramids. According to Itch, the pyramids were built not by aliens, not by slaves, not by professional workers, and not even by deities. They were built by dinosaurs. I'm telling you, the theory is absolutely insane and even absurd. Its proponents believe that dinosaurs didn't go extinct 65 million years ago. Some of them, or maybe all of them, survived, adapted to new conditions, and millions of years later ended up in Egypt. Egyptians tamed them using their incredible intelligence and harnessed them to build the pyramids. The giant lizards were incredibly powerful, so it was easy for them to lift and move multi-ton blocks. Theorists believe that dinosaurs could be used only as brute force. All the complex corridors, fitting blocks to each other, and facings were carried out by Egyptians themselves. You'll ask a logical question. How could anyone think of such a crazy theory? Well, the proponents of this theory refer to the dinosaur bones that were found in 2014 in one of the pyramids. This is literally the only evidence for their theory. Egyptologists refuted it. According to the inscriptions on the walls of the pyramids, the bones were found during the construction of the pyramids. Egyptians found them so interesting that they decided to leave them inside as a value. In general, such a strange but funny theory. Next in line is another theory, according to which the pyramids were not built by dinosaurs or even aliens. Everything simple, they were built by Egyptians with the following nuance. They did not strain, dragging multi-ton blocks, and move them with the help of sound. This made the blocks float in the air. In short, it's all about levitation. And while this theory may seem no less crazy and absurd than the story about the dinosaurs, scientists have proven that it can be true, at least in part. They set up a series of experiments in which they lifted small objects with the help of acoustics and sounds. If you use special sound transducers and adjust them to the right frequency, you can make even fairly large objects levitate. And given that the Egyptians were a smart people, they could figure out how to move heavy boulders in this way. For example, there's an opinion that this was done by priests who played some special musical instruments or the Egyptians created sound generators that could make the blocks fly. Perhaps the ancient Egyptians in general created something that we can't even imagine and used it to build the pyramids in a matter of weeks. Don't underestimate the possibilities of what they may have been capable of. Some theorists believe that the Egyptians were very much ahead of time, so much that they even had their own video surveillance system. People came to this idea after researchers studied the eyes of one ancient Egyptian statue of a scribe from the Cairo Museum. They were amazed at how high quality and high level of parts assembly the statue had, 
and how complex the whole construction was. Scientists found out that the eyes of the statue are polished glass lenses fixed with glue of unknown composition. Behind the lenses, there are holes with two more lenses, collecting and scattering. Finally, behind these lenses, there is a mysterious plate with broken pieces of copper wire. Based on this, a proposition was put forward that the eyes of the statue had a built-in video surveillance system. Scientists examined other ancient Egyptian statues and found that some of them also have similar complex optical systems in their eyes. Either all of this is really the remnants of the Egyptians' video systems, or it's just their extraordinary skill in making statues. It's up to you what to decide. What did Elon Musk tell about the Egyptian pyramids? How did Nikola Tesla study them? Was the secret of the legendary structure solved back in the last century? Keep watching. Elon Musk, right here. The American entrepreneur is known all over the world for his loud inventions as well as no less loud statements. <laughs> Strangely enough, some of these just related to the famous Egyptian pyramids and caused quite a stir on the internet. Elon once wrote, Of course the pyramids were built by aliens. And then it began. There were a bunch of people who wanted to interview him and ask questions about this topic, to hear explanations and perhaps evidence that's still hidden from public eyes. It didn't come to that, however, as the Egyptian government intervened in the conversation and asked Elon to come visit them so they could prove him otherwise. I don't know whether this happened or not, however, whatever the case may be, I can't forget about his statement. Tell me, can a man who's involved in spaceflight and is the richest man in the world lack information on a topic he's interested in? And today we're going to delve into the theory that supports this. Let's start by answering the question, who could have actually built the pyramids? This question has been asked by historians for many hundreds of years, but they still cannot get any unambiguous answer. For example, the Great Pyramid of Giza, for many years, was considered the largest structure in the world, although it was built several thousand years ago. Facing almost exactly north, it's deflected only 3.6 degrees and aligned even more precisely than the Royal Observatory in Greenwich. But how did the people of antiquity manage to do this? It's hardly a coincidence, because other pyramids are no less surprising. The first to try to solve this mystery was Herodotus. I think you've heard about this ancient Greek historian and geographer, so he put forward a theory that Pharaoh Khufu made the whole Egyptian people work for him, dividing them into two parts. One was engaged in delivery of stone blocks to the coast, and the other transported them from there directly to the pyramid. On a permanent basis, around 100,000 people worked at the construction site, replacing each other every three months. People worked not less than 10 years. But here the main question arises. How could these people lift such heavy blocks? It's unreal. According to Herodotus, this is not entirely true. He believed that the Egyptians lifted blocks using wooden jacks resembling cradles. Okay, let's say this is clear, but how did these blocks even appear? They're so smooth and clear, they say it's impossible to put even a piece of paper between their joints. One person says that no special tools were required for such a precise fit. But that's not all. For a long time, people could not understand how exactly these gigantic, even though flat blocks, were transported. In 2013, this secret was revealed by one of the discovered diaries of some foreman. In these notes, people described their actions. It was said that the blocks were carried on water, on boats, to the very base of the pyramid under construction on special channels. One of such underground channels, through which water was supplied to the pyramid, was discovered by the well-known American archaeologist Mark Lehner. It seems that we have the answer, but everything ended with the discovery of one channel, so this theory has not received universal recognition. The foreman did not reveal the main secret, how the cut limestone granite blocks were stacked in the pyramid. A little time passed and French and British archaeologists made an attempt to explain this miracle. They discovered a device with the help of which the ancient Egyptians moved and lifted huge limestone blocks. It turned out to be a ramp at the quarry. It was poured out four and a half thousand years ago, just at the time of the construction of the Great Pyramid of Giza. On it, the blocks were moved on skids, pulled by ropes. According to scientists, it's the ramp that gives the answer to another riddle. How heavy blocks were lifted to the pyramid? 
However, the most popular theory today is another. It was shared by an architect from France, Jean-Pierre Houdin, suggests that the Great Pyramid of Giza was built with the help of two separate spiral slopes. One of them was an external spiral ramp, and the second slope was parallel and internal. On it, these stones were stretched to the end and then were laid on an external spiral. In support of this theory, modern studies of pyramids have proved that spiral images are actually traced in their design. A French geochemist named Joseph Davidowitz put forward the theory that the blocks were filled with concrete. As he himself said, he understood this because he noticed something strange and uncharacteristic about the blocks. The limestone did not match the limestone in the quarries where it was supposedly excavated. In addition, microstructure of the stone was surprisingly amorphous or glass-like with lots of tiny air bubbles that were not present in natural limestone. Here the man drew a parallel and it dawned on him the blocks were not quarried and transported to Giza but were cast in wooden molds. According to official sources, the geochemist even managed to create reconstituted limestone concrete using only four ingredients available to the ancient Egyptians – water, crushed limestone, quicklime and natron, a substance that was used in mummification. Joseph sent the blocks he received for examination, and the result turned out to be identical to the blocks from Egypt. No matter how interesting the French chemist's theory was, it still failed and could not explain many new nuances that emerged in the process of study. But the theory about aliens, as it seems to me, will never lose its relevance. By the way, the French writer Eric von Daniken was one of the first to say that aliens took part in the construction of the pyramids. The ideas outlined in his books are rejected by almost all academic scientists, but at the same time they're wildly popular. Listen to Eric for yourself. The pyramids were built by an extraterrestrial civilization, at least because of the similarity of their design to astronomical alignments. For example, the sides of the Great Pyramid of Giza align almost perfectly with the four cardinal points of the compass. Some theorists believe that this alignment was intentional. Nevertheless, most scientists think it's just mere coincidence, and in this, I cannot support them. And indeed, believing some writer or not-so-famous archaeologist is not the noblest thing, but listening to a great scientist known all over the world is another story. Nikola Tesla also wrote his word about the pyramids into history. At that time, people knew little about electricity, and Tesla began to think whether some advanced technologies are hidden in the pyramids. He had the idea that the power of the pyramids was related to electromagnetism, and he spent a lot of time and effort trying to solve this mystery. Tesla had some rather unusual theories about the pyramids. He believed that they could store electricity, which could then be used to power vast areas. Allegedly, inside the pyramids, there are secret chambers that control electromagnetic fields. They managed to do this because of the material they're made of. Tesla even thought that the pyramids were somehow connected to cosmic energy, which could be used for spiritual enlightenment and healing. Sounds very modern. No wonder this scientist was considered a guest from the future. Unfortunately, the scientist did not achieve special recognition on this subject and abandoned the study of the pyramids. But modern researchers have used already available data and received surprising results. With the help of theoretical physics, people have conducted a study in which they've found that if the radio waves were of a specific length, then the pyramids could concentrate energy inside its rooms and direct it in the right direction for people. It turns out that Tesla was right, and the pyramids are actually centers of accumulation of electricity? Maybe yes, maybe no. Again, no one is able to give an exact answer, because all these are only theories. Speaking of theories, since we've touched upon the topic of aliens, why not discuss the possible involvement of Atlanteans in the construction of the pyramids? According to the legend, about 11,000 years ago, the continent Atlantis was inhabited by the developed civilization. The ancient Greek philosopher Plato, in his works Timaeus and Critias, claimed that Atlantis lay beyond the Pillars of Hercules. That island was huge, and the state was powerful enough to attack the whole of Europe. No one could defeat them. No one but a wicked and merciless fate. A powerful earthquake almost completely wiped out the civilization from Earth, and as historians believe, from that moment began the great Atlantean journey across the planet. Among other things, they settled in Egypt, 
told the locals about their knowledge and taught them how to build pyramids. There's a reason why similar structures can be found all over the world, and their similarities in architecture can be explained by the fact that these cultures share a common origin in Atlantis. Curiously, a real person, 19th century American congressman Ignatius Donnelly, dared to endorse this theory. In 1882, he wrote the book Atlantis, The Antediluvian World, in which he suggested that the catastrophic event that ended the great civilization was none other than the Great Flood described in the Bible. Actually, the fact that people were involved in the construction of the pyramids is even more popular than the alien theory. There are so many coincidences that prove it, and the theory about reflection on the stars is the next in this long list. Orion's belt, consisting of three bright stars, is visible in almost every place on Earth. It was widely used by sailors in astronomical navigation many hundreds of years ago. In different parts of the planet and in different times, Orion was called differently, but its essence remained unchanged. One might think, well, what's the big deal? It's just a constellation. How does it relate to the pyramids? As it turns out, the relation is direct. The three main pyramids at Giza were not built by chance. As well as the Bermuda Triangle and the center of origin in the Sumerian civilization, they're located on the legendary parallel of 33 degrees north latitude. And of course, they're related by their location to the orientation of the three stars of Orion's belt. The engineer from Egypt, Robert Bauvel, connects buildings of the pyramids with the display of Orion's belt on Earth. And if so, then here's the question. How ancient people knew all this? They couldn't have had a telescope or something like that to study the stars so clearly and in detail. Or did they have something we just don't know about? Bauvel thinks the three main pyramids were conceived as a single project, a conglomerate that embodied the ideology of the ancient Egyptians. This is supported by the fact that no mummies were ever found in the pyramids. Yes, there were sarcophagi, and in theory, bodies should lie in them, but they were not there. Is this another incredible coincidence? Just when we start to set foot on the right path that will lead us to the answers, suddenly another problem or fact appears, throwing us off the path. So this time I'll talk about the pyramids on the moon as a proof of the alien origin of these buildings. Earlier the lunar surface was looked at with optical devices. Of course, they couldn't give a full picture of these or those objects, which caused a lot of questions and assumptions because of their unusual shape. But fortunately, technology is developing by leaps and bounds, and today we can already look at the surface of the moon with the help of powerful telescopes or satellites. Against the background of information about what the moon looks like at a given time, more and more images appear, and some of them are alarming, to put it mildly. After all, on the moon, people find incomprehensible constructions resembling the pyramids known to us. For any reasonable person, such photos will not cause questions. After all, everything is quite trivial. The effect of pyramids is achieved by illumination when light rays fall at a high angle to the surface. But is it really like this? Or are people just looking for a way to reassure themselves at the sight of pyramids on our satellite? Roswell Incident what does this have to do with it? Wow. If you didn't know, the Roswell Incident is an event that happened in July 1947 in the city of Roswell, New Mexico. An unknown flying object fell there. The military initially claimed it was a flying disc, but soon abandoned this version, claiming that it was just a piece of debris from a weather balloon. However, many eyewitnesses claimed they saw the remains of an unusual flying machine and even the bodies of alien beings. Well, after this incident, people found strange symbols engraved on some stick at the crash site. People seriously began to think that these hieroglyphic writings were inscribed on the body of the UFO. It seems that there's nothing interesting here, but let's delve into the research of the pyramids a little better, so we can learn that something similar was found in them as well. For example, in 1943, at the entrance of the Great Pyramid of Giza, four mysterious marks were found. To this day, the purpose and meaning of these inscriptions remain a mystery, but the most amazing thing is that they were incredibly similar to what was found at the site of the fall of the UFO in Roswell. The find at the pyramids was discovered by Egyptologist Andre Pochin, and he, in fact, connected the discovery to aliens. It turns out that the inhabitants of ancient Egypt have already had contact with aliens, or perhaps there are no aliens, and the inhabitants of Egypt simply moved to some other planet? Unfortunately, it's unlikely that mankind will ever know the answers to all these questions. But don't get upset. Maybe I was wrong to jump to conclusions. 
What if people have already figured out the secret of ancient Egypt, but just don't want to share it with the public? In 1887, Edward Leedskalnen was born, a man who was engaged in making sculptures at an amateur level at an already conscious age. At first, his hobby was not interesting to anyone, but as soon as he showed people one of his creations, just once, the man was immediately surrounded by reporters. Everyone wanted to know how he did it. Lead Scalman worked alone and preferred to keep his building processes secret. His methods were unusual. He used heavy stones and created huge monolithic statues that he moved with the simplest tools and mechanisms. Just take a look at his creations. Would you believe that all this was built by an ordinary man? All alone at that? I find it hard to believe, but it was the case. The man said that he had discovered the secret that the Egyptians used during the construction of the pyramids, but Edward didn't share it, as I said. He took the secret to his grave, leaving only his garden for people to look at and wonder how Leed Scalman had done it. Although there are plenty of unexplained finds in Egypt itself. Let's start with a very interesting discovery in Egypt. I'm talking about an unknown tomb found very recently, which is about three and a half thousand years old. Because of this, people are particularly interested in the find. It could well belong to the 18th dynasty, the ones to which pharaohs Tutankhamun and Akhenaten belong. Who was buried in the Valley of the Kings? Of course, a royal person. Most likely it's a princess or the wife of a pharaoh and a relative of King Tut. This is the version put forward by one of the historians who was involved in these excavations. As far as is known, King Tut was married. His daughters were already found in his tomb, but his wife was not there. Nevertheless, the chances of finding out the truth are much less than usual. The fact is that the tomb is in poor condition due to a series of floods and other natural disasters that happened to it during such a long stay underground. Mysterious Stranger The Saqqara settlement is one of the most popular places among archaeologists, because it's there where people have recently found a lot of things of interest. In September 2020, scientists, who thought this place was already depleted of discoveries, found 13 sarcophagi with mummies inside. By early October of the same year, that number had risen to 59, and has now surpassed the mark of several hundred. In addition, scientists have also found a variety of figurines. The deity, Ta Soker, was depicted on 40 figurines. It used to be believed that these statues depicting him have magical powers and help find a posthumous rebirth. On 20 other figurines, they found an image of Horus, the Egyptian god of heaven, who's represented as a man with a falcon's head. But among the figures found, there were also those that could not be explained so simply and easily. The name Phenomus was written on them, but it didn't give archaeologists any clues. Until now, scientists are still trying to understand who this unknown person was in ancient Egyptian times. Someone thinks that this was one of the pharaoh's sons. Others are sure that this man didn't exist. If you have your own theories, be sure to share them in the comments down below. Ancient Tomb Last year, near the city of Aswan, scientists found a family tomb carved into the rock. They stumbled upon 20 well-preserved mummies of the Greco-Roman period. This site had clearly been pillaged long ago, but for modern people it was still very valuable. The fact is that a bunch of ancient necklaces, copper figurines, and sacrificial table used for rituals were found there. The finds also included vessels, a stretcher made of palm tree, as well as cardboard. The tomb also contained the mummy of a child. Why was it placed in such an unusual place? And whose child was it? That remains unknown. Portraits of Mummies In the same year of 2022, archaeologists discovered for the first time in 115 years portraits of mummies made with wax paint. Two complete and two incomplete portraits were found at the site of an ancient monument, a cemetery in the city of Philadelphia in Egypt. The portraits were painted on linen shrouds. It's not difficult to guess that all these people who were buried there belonged to the higher ranks. The thing is that such portraits were very expensive, and not everyone could afford them. The authors of the study believed that they were painted by artists from Alexandria, an Egyptian city on the Mediterranean coast. Scientists have also found statues of the goddess of love, as well as papyri and Greek writings. A tomb oriented to the sun. The next find found in Egypt dates back to 1830 BC. 
I'm talking about an unusual tomb found in the necropolis of the nobles and priests of those times. However, the point here is not the antiquity of the find, not that the tomb belonged to some high-ranking person, but that it was oriented to the point of sunrise on the winter solstice. It was designed so that the sun's rays would reach the governor's statue. It's known that among the Egyptians, the sun and its cycle have always been associated with rebirth. The winter solstice symbolized the victory of light over darkness, and the summer solstice usually coincided with the flooding of the Nile. Both dates were of great importance for the culture of Egypt. Judging by this discovery, people of those times already knew how to calculate the position of the sun and the direction of the sun's rays. The ancient architect used the simplest tools such as a pole about three feet long and a square. Thus, he calculated the orientation of the tomb, the chapel, and the statue, albeit presumably not even close to being exact. All this together allowed the architect to determine the volume of the tomb so that it would not interfere with other tombs. By the way, I touched on the flooding of the Nile. Do you want me to tell you something interesting about this river? There's a theory that the ancient Egyptians knew how to regulate the flow of the Nile to facilitate construction. They diverted some water through the Bar Yusef Canal and lowered the water level. If they needed the opposite result, they used barrage dams that quickly raised the Nile level. This is not a simple theory, but a practically proven fact. Not far from the Royal Necropolis, archaeologists found several dams along which the building materials were brought almost right up to the pyramids. Scientists note that auxiliary materials were delivered by water. The basic blocks for the pyramids were cut directly on the plateau. In general, the Nile River played an incredible role in the life of the ancient Egyptians. It was a reference point and an indication of what they needed to do. For example, during the reign of the pharaoh Djoser, a terrible famine broke out because of drought. Most likely, it was because of this that the locals decided to build a pyramid for sacrifices to the ancestor of the gods. Generally speaking, the ancient Egyptians believed very strongly in various gods, and they also worshipped their own pharaohs. One of them, whom you all know very well, was Tutankhamun, also known as King Tut. It may seem that interest in him has long since waned. People have figured it all out, dug it all up, but it's not the end of the story. Did you know that the famous Egyptian died at the age of 19? People have made many movies on the subject, trying to investigate the true cause of his death. They even cited his x-rays taken in 1968 as an example. They also added the results of a computerized tomography scan. All this made one to believe the version that he had badly injured ribs as well as a broken leg. It was very likely that he had been killed in an accident with a chariot of some kind. Running ahead of the story, I'd like to say don't rush to believe this. Another research group stated that the pharaoh did not die because of a collision with a chariot, but because he fell from it. Alternatively, they say an attack by a hippo. There's also a simpler version. The mummy of the pharaoh could have suffered at the hands of robbers and black archaeologists during World War II who were careless with the body of King Tut. But in my opinion, the most interesting theory is that King Tut's fall from the chariot was almost impossible for the reason that he had a club foot and could hardly stand on his own. In confirmation of this, there is such a fact. There were 130 canes in his burial, which he obviously used throughout his life. The pharaoh probably died because of incest. DNA analysis showed that his parents were brother and sister. So his already weakened body simply couldn't withstand some disease, for example, malaria. Moving Blocks with Sound I think each of you has seen in movies how characters often move heavy objects with the help of their minds. At first glance, it may seem unrealistic, but in fact, it's not. It is theoretically possible to move blocks, if not with the help of the power of thought, then with the help of sound. And it was possible a long time ago in ancient modern scientists have conducted many experiments in which they found out that acoustics can really provide an invaluable aid in levitation. At first, scientists lifted the smallest balls possible, and over time they increased their diameter. Although at first glance it may seem unnecessary to conduct so many experiments, the scientists assure us that they are useful, because each time a new method of levitation was used. 
One team involved in such experiments broke the record for the size of a levitating object by using three parallel sound transducers that generated waves of different frequencies. When the waves merged, they created a single stream of vibration that kept the object in the air. The Bristol group used a single sound source and a reflector that allowed the ball to return smoothly into place. You have to admit that coming up with a method of levitation and starting to attribute it to ancient Egypt is a dubious idea. Do you think this version might be true? Or do you think that nothing like this could have happened in ancient Egypt? Falcon Hunters In January 2019, researchers stumbled upon a mysterious complex, or rather an Egyptian temple, adapted to the belief system. It all dates from about the 3rd century BC. It was from this period that the people who existed here settled this territory and began to do their things. Here, the Blemis lived. It was a nomadic Nubian tribe. In this Egyptian temple, scientists have found their harpoons, cube-shaped statues, and a steel with instructions related to religion. The most notable find was 15 falcons inside the temple, most of them headless. Scientists have already encountered buried birds in this area, but before them was the first case when all of this happened directly in the temple, where many birds were buried at once. What's more, the scientists found an inscription on the steel that translates as, it is improper to boil a head in here. It was probably for religious reasons that people buried, mummified, and depicted the falcons. A Gardener for the Dead During many studies, historians have repeatedly encountered strange frescoes on which gardens were painted. People had only seen them in pictures, and then, after many years of searching, they finally found something of it in reality. I'm talking about one of the famous Egyptian funerary gardens. According to historians, it's about 4,000 years old. It's a plot of land measuring 10 by 6.5 feet, which is located on a raised open area at the entrance to the stone tomb. The garden is divided into rectangular sectors of about 5 square inches each. Inside the sectors, archaeologists found various seeds and remains of plant roots. The ancient Egyptians believed that death was an inevitable and extremely important step in everyone's life, which must be passed with respect and preciseness. All things placed in the tomb accompany the deceased on this path and in the other world. All of them are not accidental and carry important sacred meaning. Right in this garden, there were the objects for a ritual which included offerings. The things people do to make it easier for the deceased person. But not only Egypt can surprise us. The Skeleton of a Giant This unusual story has its origins in Thailand. It was there that a group of archaeologists stumbled upon the incredibly large skeleton of an ancient giant. People quickly gave the story publicity, but not everyone could believe it. If the primary source is to be believed, in November 2017, a certain Douglas Anderson and his group dug up a 16-foot-long skeleton of a dead man fighting a snake. The article, which was written by archaeologists, was backed up by photos and a video, all of which looked quite plausible and made one believe that such tall people once really existed. But it looks plausible only at first glance. If you search the internet for information about Professor Douglas Anderson, it becomes clear that the man has not been involved in any excavations for more than 30 years. What do you think this was all about? Was the skeleton fake too? The Shroud of Turin is a very large, more than 13-foot piece of linen cloth on which you can see the face of Jesus Christ. The history of one of the most mysterious artifacts in the world is as mysterious as the object itself. It all began at the end of the 4th century, or even earlier. A letter has survived in which locals of the time wrote that someone was supposedly worshipping a strange and large cloth with the image of the Savior. It wasn't long before the cloth was taken from Palestine to the city of Edessa, which was then under Roman rule. When their king died, the pagans seized power in the city and destroyed the Christian community. It's said that the linen cloth was hidden by being walled up in a niche in the city's walls. In the 10th century, the emperor who besieged Edessa repurchased the cloth and took it to Constantinople. The legendary artifact was not known for more than 100 years until, in 1353, the French poet, diplomat, deeply religious, and very rich knight Geoffrey de Charnay announced that he had the shroud. It's unclear how exactly it could be there, but over the next 200 years it was bought back and taken to its new home. 
Turin, Italy. In that place, a special house was built for the artifact and there it's stored to this day. Of course, because of the unthinkable number of transfers of the shroud, it begins to seem that the original shroud has long been lost. Nevertheless, many tests confirm the authenticity of the relic. In December 2021 in Switzerland, archaeologists found the youngest Roman gladiatorial arena of late antiquity known to scholars. Without expecting it, scientists stumbled upon a fragment of an oval wall with two massive gates and thresholds made of giant sandstone blocks. There are traces of plaster and wooden elements on the interface of the wall. Archaeologists also discovered fragments of a wooden pedestal, which would have held the seats of the People's Tribune and other Roman officials. Initially, the archaeologists thought they'd stumbled upon a large Roman quarry, but it soon became clear to everyone that this was a real Roman amphitheater. Moreover, these ruins could be one of the last gladiatorial arenas built at the end of the Roman Empire. And this is not mere speculation. For example, on the territory of the ancient Roman arena, it was possible to find a coin minted in the period from 337 to 341 AD. The shape of the stone block and the composition of the mortar typical for this period of time also indicate that it belongs to the late antiquity. Another artifact of incredible value to archaeologists is the Govan stones. At one time, they served as a kind of sarcophagus for special personalities of the Norwegian and British cultures. Modern people have got them out of the ground only in the 19th century. A total of 46 of these stones were found, while 31 have survived to this day. Each of the unusual sarcophagi is decorated with a unique drawing of animals and weighs half a ton. As I said, the most popular opinion about them is that the Govan stones were used to store bodies. But if that was the case, where are the bodies now? Perhaps it's a magical object that teleported the remains of the dead. Or maybe it's not what people think at all. What do you think? Not so long ago, a group of archaeologists from Turkey was working in the ancient city of Azenoy and found there a male statue of 6.8 feet high, as well as sculpted heads of Greek mythology gods Eros, Dionysus, and Hercules. Specialists were quick to attribute the objects to a specific time. It turned out that all this was created about 2,000 years ago. In addition, the archaeologists thought the latest finds had something to do with their other excavations two years earlier. During them, they found the sculpted torso of Hercules. It might seem as if the puzzle had finally been put together, but it wasn't the case. The head didn't fit the body. Which means the scientists now have fragments of two statues of the hero, parts of which they hope to find later. But that's not all the interesting stuff that caught the scientists' eyes. Another important discovery was an almost complete male sculpture more than six and a half feet long. The only thing that the monument lacks is the half of the pedestal and the foot. I wonder how ancient people created such beautiful and tall statues. Meanwhile, in Japan, archaeologists have stumbled upon a huge sword seven and a half feet long. As the researchers say, the find was discovered during excavations on the Tomio Murayama burial mound, which dates back to the 4th century AD. The mound, with a diameter of 282 feet and a height of 33 feet, belongs to the Kofun period, that is one of the earliest eras in the history of Japan. Earlier excavations here revealed numerous farm tools, household utensils, cylindrical copper and bronze utensils, and several mirrors decorated with images of gods and animals. During the new excavations, archaeologists discovered a giant Dokken sword, a type of bronze sword characteristic of ancient Japan with a rod-shaped hilt and a broad blade. Despite the unusual principle of manufacture, the main feature of the weapon, as you've already guessed, was its size. It's difficult to imagine for whom this sword could have been made because one had to be a real giant to be able to wield it comfortably. Based on this, experts suggest that the sword was not created for natural purposes, but for ancient rituals to repel the forces of evil. This is evidenced by the material from which the sword was made, as well as its shape. The weapon's not iron, but bronze. The blade is slightly curved, which resembles a snake, the very creature that the natives of those times worshipped. A Jug With Coins Another discovery from Japan, which surprised everyone no less, is a huge ceramic vessel more than 3.2 feet in diameter. This mysterious object was filled to the top with ancient coins. It's said to be the largest find of medieval coins in the country's history, if one can put it that way. The reservoir contains coins more than six centuries old. Whose treasure could it be? Why was it hidden underground? And for what purpose was so much money stored there? No one can give an exact answer to these questions. 
Having established the approximate date of the walled treasure, scientists have put forward a single assumption. It's possible that at the time the money was hidden, the country was divided and ruled by the emperor. He, in turn, gave the conquered lands to the shogun's military dictators, and one of the rich warriors who lived there decided to hide the treasure for fear of being robbed. Then something happened to the warrior and his money remained deep underground. The Tower of Skulls The next discovery came directly from Mexico. It's a cylindrical structure of hundreds of skulls that was found in the area of Templo Mayor, one of the main temples of the Aztec capital Tenochtitlan. According to researchers, the tower may have been part of the traditional rack for the skulls of prisoners sacrificed. If so, the complete structure held at least 60,000 heads of fallen enemies, and it's truly astonishing. According to one of the main versions, the temple, which housed many skulls, fought against darkness and provided light for the people. At least, that's what the locals strongly believed. To maintain its power, they had to feed the temple with the skulls of their enemies. So in fact, that's how the place was filled. But it's likely things were quite different. After all, archaeologists also found the remains of women. Perhaps the locals had some special rituals that we can't even guess about. What do you think such a tower of skulls might have been for? And now I'll show you some very unusual ancient structures that archaeologists found not so long ago. They were nicknamed desert kites because of the shape of the corridor leading to the main part, the head. These structures were made of low walls, had a careful layout, and could be more than 328 feet wide and 2.4 miles long. Experts believe that apart from hunting for food, the structures may have served other purposes. For example, they could be used to catch animals for the sake of domestication, and in some cases the walls were a coral for livestock. And now let's look at historical photos nobody can explain. Have you ever taken one or more photos, looked at them, thought everything was fine, and then when you look at them again you notice a discrepancy, some nuance that bothers you? Well, a similar thing happened with photos taken a hundred years ago. In 2015, Krasnoyarsk Regional Museum of Local History in Russia received a request for photos of the sites of Krasnoyarsk, taken during the reign of Emperor Nicholas II of Russia. During the search, the museum workers were struck by a strange fact. In many photos, they found the same girl. She had a sad face everywhere. She was also wearing the same clothes. Since the photos were completely different, taken from different angles and from different distances, we can conclude that the author of the photos didn't photograph the girl. She appeared in the photos herself. In all the photos, she's 8 to 10 years old. She's always wearing a hat and holding an umbrella. The girl's wearing a beautiful white dress and coat. She has a long black braid with a ribbon, which is always thrown over her shoulder. The only thing people have noticed is that she has different boots in different photos. But what remains constant is her sullen expression. It's a look that gives you chills. Local historians compared the photos with the way the buildings in different places looked 100 years ago and suggest that most likely the photos were taken from 1906 to 1908. Curiously enough, the girl didn't change at all during this time, as if she was not alive. People immediately began to study the pictures, or rather to determine their author, but it wasn't possible to do this. The pictures were also checked a lot of times. Some people were sure that this was all in editing and fiction, made for one purpose to attract tourists. However, later it turned out that there was no editing in the case of these pictures. People agreed that this is a real phantom girl who is either dead and cannot find a resting place, or she's a ghost of the city, always watching its residents. And here's another strange photo that no one can explain. It shows three children having fun in the company of their parents. The adults wanted to take a photo to remember, but never imagined that along with this they would catch someone incredibly scary on camera. The creepy silhouette of the famous Freddy Krueger appeared behind the kids. Of course, the first thing that comes to mind is that the whole thing is a fake, but the most experienced editing experts proved otherwise. None of the professionals could find a single trace of editing. So the Elm Street killer is real? Smartphones 
After studying old picture or ancient paintings, one feels somehow uncomfortable. Not only because of the fact that life was very different from our modern life, but also because of the realization that we may be living in an illusion or under someone's supreme control. Why do I have such bad thoughts? It's all because of ordinary pictures that were painted back in the 19th or early 20th century. Back then, none of the people had any idea about the smartphone. In fact, people didn't even know what a usual cell phone was. However, one of the pictures clearly shows a couple standing by the riverbank and handing each other a dark rectangle with rounded corners, reminiscent of an early iPhone model. Conspiracy theorists from all over the world immediately remembered the theories about time travel and, you know, for some reason, I believe it a little. Here's another picture painted a little later. It shows Native Americans, and one of them is holding an object that looks a lot more like an iPhone. The Native American seems to be holding a smartphone in the same way that we do when we're browsing social media or playing video games. And if you think the phone versions sound too strange, and it could have been absolutely anything, just assume it actually was the case. After all, normal versions simply didn't exist, as it turns out. Let's continue the topic of time travelers and take a look at this interesting young man. This photo was taken in 1941, and all the people in it look about the same, all but one. The guy dubbed the time traveling hipster stands out from the crowd. He wears glasses that are trendy nowadays, some branded t-shirt, and a zippered jacket. Along with this, he's holding a handheld camera as if he's arrived from the future to take important pictures of the past years. The photo was first made public in 2004 when it appeared in a museum exhibition. As you understand, no one would ever expose complete nonsense there, which means that the picture was checked by skilled specialists. So it turns out that this man really returned to 1941 to witness the opening of the South Fork Bridge? Quite possibly, yes, but some people believe otherwise. There are those who believe that although his appearance is different from the people at the time, he's still relevant and fits into the context of a bygone era. Take, for example, fashionable glasses with side shields. Such a model existed in those times, although it was considered rare. As for the camera, portable cameras have been produced since the 1930s. Turned out that the Kodak company produced them in 1941. They were of the same size as the one in the photo. What do you think? Was this really a time traveler? Or is it just an ordinary citizen who stands out from the crowd? A picture of the future. Who would have thought that the most real battles on social media could be sparked by just one 400-year-old painting? A Dutch artist painted this marvel called Portrait of a Boy. Some critics claim it depicts the artist's eight-year-old son, while others see it as the son of a wine merchant. But it's not him that's attracted attention, it's his shoes. The most attentive among you have already noticed one obvious similarity to the brand of our days. I'm talking about Nike, of course. In the pair of shoes, black Nike sneakers with a distinctive logo in the shape of a tick was recognized. It'd be fine, but the picture was painted in 1652. And the athletic shoe company wasn't founded until 312 years after that in 1964. But how could a thing from our time be in the past? Maybe time machines do exist after all. Of course, no one will give us an exact answer, so we can only guess and stand on the one side of the debate or the other. Personally, it seems to me that if a time portal does exist, people probably wouldn't move some shoes there, so I'm inclined to believe that this is just a coincidence. Do you think any filters were used in the photo you're looking at right now? I think that even the most inexperienced editor or a person who's never worked with effects in their life would say yes. But the interesting thing about this picture is that they're not actually there at all. Experts have studied the negative of the shot and made a startling statement. According to them, the picture depicts negatively charged energy entities, in other words, demons. The conclusion of experts was unanimous. The man in the photo is possessed by horrible creatures. The story of the picture, by the way, is quite simple and understandable. A man came to take a photo for a document, but after printing it out, he and the photographers saw this. I agree, it sounds unbelievable, but the fact that experts have confirmed the authenticity of the picture makes one horrified. In fact, the story of strange pictures is far from an uncommon topic, especially in this day and age when the world of technology is full of opportunities to distinguish a real picture from a fake one. There are plenty of weird shots out there, but some of them stand out in this weird and scary general background. And here's one of them. This photo was taken in 1997. 
On that day, an American woman named Denise Russell came to visit her 94-year-old grandmother, who had been in a nursing home for only a week. They had a great time, took a lot of pictures, and planned to meet again. But unfortunately, the grandmother didn't live long, and by the time of their next meeting, she had already passed away. Because of the burial process and grief, no one touched these photos. Nobody cared about them. But when the moment came, people noticed one strange thing. Behind the back of the grandmother, a man was clearly visible who was similar to their grandfather, like two peas in a pod. That is, it was the woman's husband. And the problem was that he had died 13 years before this photo was taken. What's interesting is that the weirdness didn't end there. A cousin who heard about this photo of the deceased grandfather asked for the picture to be emailed to him so he and his family could look at it carefully. The next day, he called his sister and asked, did you see the face in the branches? She told him no. Then he replied, look just above the red car. And indeed, if you look closely, you can see some strange and unpleasant alien creature there, watching the couple intently from the side. Is this really what death looks like? Which is waiting for a person to visit it? What do you think? Who but dead people can be associated with the most bizarre and frightening photos in history? For example, a bone-chilling story happened to another American woman who traveled with her husband to visit her mother's grave in 1959. It's unclear why, but during the trip, the people took pictures of themselves. Apparently, they wanted to remember the process as vividly as possible. So when the wife talked to her mom at her grave and started to go back to the car, she took a picture of her husband sitting there all alone. But when the photo showed up, it turned out that he wasn't actually there all alone. The couple was stunned because in the back seat was some silhouette and glasses. In it, the woman almost immediately recognized her mother. A photography expert who examined the picture claimed that the woman's image was neither a reflection nor a double exposure. That is a superimposition of pictures on top of each other. Look at this picture. What mood do you think it conveys? Was this where the pageants were held? Was this a place of exclusion? Some kind of prison cell? Or maybe an image from a movie? What you're looking at is actually a prison cell where the Salem witches were imprisoned. It's where the accused women spent their last moments before execution. Between 1692 and 1693, about 200 people were accused of witchcraft, and 19 of those found guilty were sentenced to death. You have to admit that the picture is just awful. I don't know how to explain it, but its negative energy is felt right through the screen. Not for nothing, it's so popular on the internet because many people constantly claim that this is the only photo with a living energy. The shot allows you to plunge into the past and feel yourself in the shoes of the poor girls. However, I can't say how poor those girls were. What if they really were witches who cursed the common people or prevented them from existing in some other way? In that case, I would consider such a punishment quite justified, especially since there are other cases in history that prove the existence of such evil beings. For example, here, a picture proving that demons exist. In 2014, when this shot was first published, the internet literally exploded with reports of devils, demons, and other dark creatures are real. A comment on the photo from its author was as follows. A nurse at her post noticed something strange on the viewing monitor and managed to take a picture on her phone. When she took a closer look, she noticed a blurry, dark figure standing on a hospital bed. What's even more frightening is that the patient who was lying on the bed died an hour or two after the incident. It's believed that the camera caught death in one of its guises. Strangely enough, there are those who are convinced that this photo is absolutely normal. In their opinion, there's nothing unusual here at all. Allegedly, this is just a hospital bed, the patient's legs and medical equipment in the background. In other words, the legs could indeed belong to the patient, not to a demon, just as the devil's thigh could be the edge of the bed. However, it's not clear why a similar edge is missing on one side. These strange and mysterious photos raise questions, but you have to admit that a picture is much easier to fake. It's not the case with video footage. Creating a plausible video fake is much more difficult. Next, I'll show you how people caught parallel worlds on camera. Several years ago, a passenger on an airplane flying over the US filmed an unusual picture, a mysterious hole in the sky. As you can see, the hole shimmers and shines in the light. The video drew the attention of scientists as well as UFOologists and conspiracy theorists. While some suggested that it was just a normal celestial phenomenon, others thought that the passenger had filmed a portal into a parallel world or a harbinger of the coming apocalypse. 
Nearly four years passed and the apocalypse didn't happen, so maybe it really was a portal to another world that opened. In October 2015, residents of the Chinese city of Foshan observed a fantastic and frightening picture in the sky. Right in the clouds, a ghost floating city hovered. The outlines are very similar to the typical landscape of any megalopolis. Buildings resembling skyscrapers are clearly visible. As you can see, the outlines are angular and fairly flat, so it's difficult to write this picture off as a natural phenomenon. According to eyewitnesses, the celestial metropolis was visible for several minutes. Then it disappeared without a trace. There are many theories. Some believe that the inhabitants of Foshan saw a parallel world, which almost collided with our own. Someone believed that the aliens tried to invade in Foshan, and someone thought that the phenomenon was a mirage or a feta morgana. Whether it was a coincidence or not, a couple of days later, a similar cloud city hovered over another Chinese city in Jiangxi province. What is this? A repeat of a rare phenomena or a clear hint of parallel worlds? The following footage was taken over the sky in Arizona, USA. When the footage got on the internet, users began to build their own theories about what they saw. Many believed that the camera caught the process of merging two worlds, ours and the parallel one. This theory is not bad. We see some ray tending to the sky, which at some point seems to completely merge with it, forming a flash. This video was shot in Norway in 2009. According to the cameraman, he noticed a spiral-shaped anomaly that grew larger and larger over time as if it were expanding. He added that all this happened for 15 minutes, during which the sky was literally ablaze. Scientists have never been able to make sense of this strange phenomenon, but it seems that the mystery has been solved. The people who observed the phenomenon believe that they were able to catch a real parallel world on camera. Is it a coincidence that it's in Norway that you could observe the Hesdalen lights? This is one of the most mysterious phenomena in history which still puzzles researchers. It would seem that in order to film a parallel world, you would at least have to leave your house and look for a suitable open space, a big field, the sky or something like that. But the following video shows that a parallel world can be filmed even at home. The author of the video is a resident of the United States who wished to remain anonymous. He claims that with the help of his formulas, equations, and calculations, he's learned to open a spatial portal to parallel worlds right in his home above his bed. We see a lamp of some kind standing on the bed, changing the illumination. At some point, a light begins to show above it, and the space seems to burst open, showing a different picture. Gradually, the light fades, remaining only around the edges of the hole that's formed. Through it, we can see some kind of city from up above. Perhaps it's an image of a parallel world, or at least a portal showing some city in real time. According to the author of the video, there are certain energy vortices in his hometown that allow him to control space. With their help, he was able to create a device through which he can see what others cannot see. A local resident was out for a usual walk when suddenly she saw a mysterious anomaly in the sky. As you can see, the anomaly is a large column of light, which seems to come out of the ground and rushes into the sky. However, it may be the opposite, and the light goes from the sky to the ground. Be that as it may, it's not entirely clear what exactly the woman managed to capture. Some thought she captured the collision of a parallel world with our world, and others thought she captured a UFO. It's possible because in South and Latin America, UFOs are recorded very often. Strange things happen not only in America, but also in Australia. According to the author of this video, he saw a strange bright glow in the sky, so without thinking he took out his camera and started filming so as to not miss anything. At first, all we can see is a glow. We can see that the object changes its shape. At some point, something else suddenly appears above the object, something that looks like lamps that light up one by one. Soon, this single lamp descended and engulfed the lower glowing object, disappearing after a couple of seconds. According to the author of the video, it seemed to him that he was on the set of some sci-fi movie. And indeed, it all looked like in a movie, not in real life. But what was it really? Share your thoughts in the comments and keep watching so you don't miss anything. A hole in the sky. The next video is somewhat similar to the previous one and even more interesting than the previous one because the quality here is better. Unlike the previous video, here the action takes place in the daytime. We see some hole in the sky filmed, presumably somewhere in Russia. The object looks like a hole through which a piece of space seems to be visible. A line coming out of the hole is also noticeable. As it turned out, this line is similar to what planes leave behind when they fly. 
In some footage, we can even see someone or something flying into this hole, disappearing into it. Internet users believe that the mysterious hole in the sky is a portal through which aliens can enter our world. But other people believe that people themselves can use the hole to get to remote places of the solar system, Saturn, for example. There's also an opinion that even parallel worlds can be reached through it. That is, this hole is something like a stargate or a wormhole. According to insider information, the hole caught on camera is not the only one on our planet. There are other similar holes in different places on Earth, which people actively use to travel to the planets. Speaking of planets, the following video shows a planet in the camera lens. It wouldn't seem unusual, but when have you ever seen a planet so close to Earth? Judging by this footage, the planet that appeared was much closer to us even than the Moon. UFOologists who have watched this footage are confident that the footage captures a parallel world close to our own. Maybe it's into such portals that various planes accidentally fly in, after which they disappear forever and cannot be found. Maybe the reason for mysterious disappearances is precisely such phenomena and not anomalous places like the Bermuda Triangle. What do you think? About three years ago, footage appeared on the internet showing a shining hole appearing in a gray, overcast sky. After a while, a round object flies out into the center of the spot and seals the hole. According to many people, the operator managed to film a portal to a parallel world. Many UFOologists believe that through this and other similar portals, aliens and possibly humanoid beings like us are watching us from the future. There's a possibility that highly advanced civilizations managed to solve the mystery of the black hole and learned to use it for time travel and possibly for other purposes which are not yet known to us. The fact that parallel worlds can exist is evidenced not only by all these videos and photos but also by real people. A handful of them have managed to visit parallel worlds and dimensions and come back, after which they've shared their unique experience. Stay tuned to hear some frightening and mystical stories about parallel worlds. Ramirez Highway At around 11 p.m. on November 9, 1986, Pedro Olivia Ramirez, according to him, drove from Seville, Spain to the town of Alcala de Guardiera. He had traveled that road many times and was shocked when the road suddenly made a turn and he found himself on an unfamiliar, straight six-lane highway. There were strange objects all around him, and everything was strange. He felt warmth, and voices were heard some distance away. Old cars with white or beige narrow rectangles of unfamiliar license plates passed by Ramirez at exactly eight-minute intervals. After an hour of driving, Ramirez found a left turn. A road sign indicated that this road would take him to Alcala, Malaga, and Seville. Ramirez drove towards Seville but was very surprised to see that he had almost reached Alcala de Guardia. He returned but couldn't find the intersection, the road sign, or the six-lane highway again. As the Spaniard thought, for a while he found himself in a parallel world where everything was about the same but with slight changes in the surroundings. Another World In 1850, in a small German town near Frankfurt, a strange man appeared. No one knew where he came from. He spoke German with an accent and looked like a European. The stranger was questioned by the burgomaster of Frankfurt. The stranger said that his name was Joe Farverin and that he had come from the country of Laxaria on the continent of Sacria. He said that he didn't understand any European language except German, but that he wrote and read Laxarian and Abramian languages. According to the mystery man, Abramian is the written language of the clergy in Laxaria. He said that his religion was similar in form and doctrine to Christianity. He also revealed that Luxaria was hundreds of kilometers from Europe, separated from it by an ocean. Jafar said that he had come to Europe in search of his missing brother. On the way, he was shipwrecked, but couldn't show his route on a map or globe. Scholars at the time listened to the stranger, studied his story and believed him, then sent him to Berlin. It's still unknown exactly who Jafar Varin was. Many theorists believe that he came to our world from a parallel world where the planet looks different. That's all, guys. Do you believe in parallel worlds and universes? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and see you later.